but uh, <laughs> clearly on that end of the spectrum in the conversation this morning. Uh, we all understand that you can't let Tom Erdman have too much caffeine, and he may have had an extra <laughs> cup of coffee this morning. Uh, I, I worry that this conversation is being taken, we're, we're having this conversation in a very Africa-centric way without asking what's going to happen with investments and technological change and, and, and productivity increases outside of Africa. Look at what could happen in Southeast Asia if Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar get their act together through the infrastructure of the Mekong River Delta exporting out of Ho Chi Minh City. Ten years from now, Erie has varieties that are drought tolerant, submergent tolerant, and saline tolerant. So we're not going to lose productivity, we're going to increase productivity, we're going to have twice as many rice exports out of this region uh, ten years from now that we have now. How is Africa going to compete with that? Oh, well, they won't. They'll just put up a, the trade barriers and, and try to be self-sufficient locally. That will be the kiss of death. That will guarantee that you don't get the policy environment you need, you won't get the right kind of infrastructure, you won't have the investments, you won't get the productivity gains, and it will leave Africa behind again. I was part of a, a, an intellectual conversation in the early 1990s on lessons for Africa from Asia. We are just sort of opening up, it was just apparent after the, the, the 1980s that, you know, that Indonesia finally figured out how to have sustained economic growth. Uh, that there was, and it looked like, you know, Indonesia in 1960 was way poorer than Nigeria. Uh, Thailand was poorer than Ghana. So there was something, something that went on. Were there any lessons there? I went back and I reread the lessons. The lessons were basically policies. You, you simply have to get pro-agriculture policies. You have to get macroeconomic policies that are relatively open, reasonably stable, competitive exchange rate, make the investments, build your agricultural research capacity, get that technology out to farmers. There's no magic here. There's no secrets here. But it's, I probably said it yesterday, it's really hard to sustain a favorable policy environment for agriculture. It's just hard to do. And most of Asia has sort of figured out how not to kill agriculture. <coughs> Africa is still learning how to nurture agriculture. And I, maybe I'm a pessimist in thinking that we've still got a pretty big gap between those two policy realities. Uh, and I hope that you guys can be on the cutting edge of getting the, the policy environments in place. But uh, as you say, you, it's hard to do that from a bureaucracy. It really pretty much has to be done from inside. Okay, thank you very much. I think we don't have.